Hi everyone, I'm Dick Beardsley. Welcome to the fishing scene. Oh, hey, you got a bass going here. <laughs> We're out here doing some early season crappie fishing. And, oh, this is a fun time of the year. These bass, along with the crappies, they're up in, we're up in about two foot of water. And uh, the bass are up here, the crappies are up here. Oh, there's a little, about a pound bass there. <laughs> and uh, the reason these fish are up here, they're not up here to spawn yet. In fact, it's gonna be quite some time before that happens. But they're up here because the water is warm. There's little fish, little minnows up here. There's little bugs that the uh, minnows are feeding on. And in turn, the bass move in here, the crappies move in here, sunfish will move into these shallow areas. And uh, they're feeding on these little bugs on the little minnows. And it can just be a, a, a great time to get out there and, and really get a lot of action water is really clear so what we're doing we're, we're we're casting quite a ways so we don't spook the fish even crappies sunfish they'll spook if you get in right on top of them and what we're doing i can actually see some of the fish with my polaroid sunglasses that i have on and uh you can actually see them and with the areas that you want to seek especially early in the season after that first couple of weeks after ice out is usually the north small north bays on some of the lakes and that goes whether you're in north dakota south dakota minnesota iowa it doesn't matter you want to fish try to find those north areas of the lake that have a kind of a muddy bottom and you can see the bulrushes back behind me here and that's a good indication when there's bulrushes that the water is uh that the the bottom is more muddy soft type of bottom those, oh man, oh, I'm telling you, I just had a big old crappie come up out of the water like a bass and miss my jig. I gotta show you this, folks. You can see here, we're only fishing about a, oh, a foot and a half down, and we're just using real small, small, lindy little nipper jigs. I'm not even using a live minnow or a wax worm. I've just got a very small, one inch plastic tail. And we're pitching that out there and letting it sit and then after it sits and all those rings go away when that cork hits the water, just give it a little twitch. And when the bite's really going, sometimes that cork will hit the water and bam, it won't take hardly any time at all for those fish to just really zap it. Give it little, just little flicks. To make that jig dance around a little bit. Water is extremely clear. Oh, I just missed one. I was kind of looking down in the water there and my cork went down. So I'm gonna get back out there. And what you wanna do is, you know, kind of fan cast all over the place. You know, you, anywhere you see some reeds sticking up out of the water, those are really good areas to concentrate because they're gonna, they're gonna warm up quicker, they absorb the sunlight, plus they hold a lot of the food that these fish are in there looking for. And they're in here to feed, and they're in here to into that warmer water. And that combination, there's one, there's a crappie. There we go. Like I said, I'm casting way out there. I can, boy, the water's so clear, I can see that speckle back shining in the water. There we go. Not a real big crappie, but. Yeah, nice fish though, nonetheless, you know? Nice crappie, huh? Look at that little jig. You can see a little bit of weed there on the end of my, on the jig head of my lead head there. And we'll get, get her back in the water. And again, you know, cast off into those same areas because where there's one, crappies like to school up. And there's usually gonna be more than one in, in a location. And the key is, if that area quits, 
or you get to an area, let's say you were in here yesterday and you're really pounding them, you come back to that same area. It's always good to go back to that same area if you've been out there like the day before and really started getting into them. But don't sit on that spot all day long. If you get there and you work it 15, 20 minutes and haven't got any fish or just one or, or two and, and the day before you're really getting them, boy, move off and try a different spot. Sometimes they'll move down the bay just a little bit, kind of following the food chain. We've got more crappie action still to come. When fishing for crappies or sunfish, especially in the springtime, you want to try different jigging methods to entice those fish to bite. Sometimes casting out that float and just a slow, steady retrieve is exactly what those panfish want. Other times though, a nice little pop and go with the float really works well also. Or sometimes take it and go pop, 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 pop like that with your cork and just scoot it along the top of the water, then let it sit, and one of those actions will definitely get those fish to bite. I don't know, what is it? No, it's a little crappie, I think. What is it? I can't, no, a little crappie. Yep, little crappie. I think that cold front that moved through here dropped that water temperature five degrees, dropped the air temperature by, oh gosh, 20 degrees. Because yesterday, I was on this same lake with my son Andy, and we were just pounding some big fish. Pounding some big fish. And they're hitting a little bit lighter today also. And that's gonna, that's, that happens. That's gonna, gonna happen from time to time. Weather affects fish a lot, especially when they're up in the shallow water areas like this. Also, different uh, conditions compared to yesterday. Yesterday we had cloudy conditions. That makes a difference. Now we've got you know clear blue skies, northwest wind, our water temperature is sitting at about 56, 57 degrees. Yesterday it was 60, 61 degrees. Air temperature is sitting at around 57, 58. Yesterday it was 75 to 80 degrees. Uh, water very, very clear. It was clear yesterday also. But uh, again, with the sunshine like this, no cloud cover, that can make a difference. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna just, as I said earlier, we're gonna just move around a little bit now and see if, uh, if some of these fish aren't concentrated in a little bit different area. Let me just move on down this direction a little bit. And you can, you know, when you get out on these lakes year after year and you start realizing that a lot of the lakes you know, what works on this lake, a lot of times will work on another lake. And so if you're catching fish on a particular lake, like we are today on this lake, tomorrow if, I, if I'm on a different lake, I will start seeking out areas just like this. And you can look for areas that look fishy, like back in here. It kind of goes back in here that forms a little nook back in there. That looks to me really, really fishy. We're gonna find out here, because I'm gonna get up here a little closer and pitch this jig back up in there. And there's another spot down this direction that also looks fishy back in there. It's a little calmer, it's tied up against the, uh, the bulrushes there, and uh, that looks like it, you know, might be a good spot to hold some crappies. Okay, let's see if my instincts tell me, we'll see how fishy looking this is back in here. Now you gotta remember, just because it's fishy looking doesn't mean there'll actually be fish back in there, but, it's worth it. Oh, I just missed one. Just missed one. Also, this time of the year, look for areas 
with emerging lily pads. Again, excellent, excellent areas to be looking for these crappies hanging out. Oh, I just had a little northern pike and about a foot long follow my jig up. Um, but look for uh, emerging lily pads. Those areas also, excellent areas to look for crappies, sunfish early in the season. There's one. That's a little sunny. I got that little sunny, there's a few merging pads, little, very little guy, right up in the, uh, by the lily pads there. Boy, he really, he wanted that jig too, wow. The kind of tail I'm using too, it's just a, like I said, a one inch squid type of tail on there, and it's uh, purple and green flex. And it's, uh, it's been working very well the last couple of days. Get back over here and see if see if my fishy spot looks fishy enough. What I'm gonna do is just kind of continue to work down the edge of these bulrushes here and uh, see if we can find some some other areas that are holding some concentrated concentrations of crappies. The bite has slowed down a little bit. So what we're doing here, we're just moving around with the boat, and again with my polarized sunglasses, I can actually see some of the fish down here in these reeds. Now there's a couple things you can do. A guy could maybe try putting on a minnow, see if that might get him to entice, or switch a different colored jig. That might give a, a, a person a, a chance to catch some more fish. We're gonna try this jig for a little bit more, then I'm gonna switch colors if I don't catch a fish or soon. And if that doesn't work, I'll try putting a live bait on there like a minnow or a, or a wax worm. Sometimes when the fish are a little less aggressive, you put a little bit of real taste and food like a minnow or a wax worm in front of them, that's hard for them to resist. More early season crappies coming up. I went to a different colored jig and bam, first cast, catch a crop. And these crappies we're getting today are not very big at all. This weather has definitely affected the bite. Definitely affected the bite. But what I went to, I went to the white head with a chartreuse type of uh, tail on there. It's not tail, I should say, but uh, a um, chartreuse colored hair that's on there. Now maybe I just got lucky with that first uh, first cast, first fish kind of, oh, there's another one. Okay, color makes a difference. Don't let anybody tell you that it doesn't. That's two in a row now. Just, w oh, he just got off. Folks, I wanna show you what I'm using here. I'm using the exact same jig, same size, a, uh, I'm using a 32nd ounce jig, but it's got the green hair on there instead of the pink hair. That's the only difference. Same speckled green and blue uh, one inch rubber tail, but that, that chartreuse color, for some reason, maybe because of the bright sunshine today, hard to tell what it is, but sometimes color does make a difference. Usually pink is, is a tough color to beat. But again, that's what you have to do. You know, just because pink might have worked yesterday doesn't mean that it'll work today. So keep experimenting. Keep a positive attitude. That, that helps too. You know, every time you cast that cork out or you cast that jig out, think to yourself, I'm going to catch a fish this time. 
If you cast it out there and say, well, I'm probably not going to catch anything, you're probably right. You're probably not going to catch anything. There's one. <laughs> oh, a baby. There we go. <laughs> so much more simple. <laughs> oh. Foot of water. Maybe two feet, but not much more than that. Oh, there's a nice one. That's a this is a nice one here, folks. This is a big crop. This is a dandy. Oh baby. This is a, this is a yeah. This is this is what the, this is what everybody looks for right here. We're gonna. If I can get my there. Now that's a crappie, folks. <laughs> There's a lunker right there. I'm telling you, that's a big female. That is a nice fish, folks. Wow. Oh man. You know some of these other fish we were catching today, these smaller ones. If you want to eat some fish, those are the ones you want to take home and 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 fish, or I should say take home and eat. But these ones right here, uh-uh, please put these back. These are the ones that will continue to, to enable us to have big fish in these area lakes. I'm telling you folks, that's a nice fish. She's pushing 15 inches, that's a dandy. We'll get her back in the water right away. Tell you what, I can do this all day long. There we go. <laughs> this is fun. Come on, baby. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a boatload of about seven or eight year old kids with me right now because they would be having a ball. <laughs> this is fun. There's one. There's a little nicer one. That's a little nicer one. Boy, they're just so subtle. Barely hitting it, folks. Hey, there we go. How about that? Nice fish, huh? Hey, folks, this is a great time of the year. Get out there, get the kids out, do some crappie fishing. Doesn't take much. A uh, light action rod, small jigs, four pound test line a small cork, and let me tell you, you're gonna catch some nice fish, just like we're cotton today. Please remember to practice selective harvesting. 
By doing so, we'll continue to have great fishing for years to come. I'm Dick Beardsley. For my camera gal, Raina Benson, have a great day on the water.